Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, the sixth month, and the fifth day of the month. Almost 666. Six, six. As I sat in my house, they say that Adolf Hitler's number was 555. Someone else's number is coming up at 666. And the elders of Judah sat before me, and the hand of the Lord of God fell upon me. And I beheld, and lo, the likeness of appearance of fire, we talked about this, from the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire, our God's a consuming fire. So this is God. If you're going to see God, you're going to see God as fire. You're not going to see an image. He's a spirit. So when they made the movie Wizard of Oz and when Dorothy then finally gets to see Oz, it's all fire. Satan knows the Bible. And one of his prophets is Hollywood. And from his loins even down upward has the appearance of brightness as the color of amber. We looked at that last time. And he put forth his hand. That's God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. We looked at that. And took me by the lock of my head. And I said, I can't one of it hurt. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. Talked about that last time. And brought me the visions of God to Jerusalem. The door of the inner gate. Now this is this is at the temple, but we're also at where Ahaz brought the image of jealousy in the altar that he had made. It's still there. An inner gate which looked toward the north. So we're on we're on the north side, where was a seat of image of jealousy which provoked the jealousy. And I beheld the glory of God. So Ezekiel did not see God. He saw the glory of God. And when Israel saw God on, on Mount Sinai, there was fire, smoke, clouds, thunder, lightning. That's the description of John where he said what the throne of God is. According to the vision that I saw in the plain. Ezekiel chapter 1. Now, when we look at this vision or kind of vision of God, and Jesus said God's a spirit, and no man has seen God at any time. Alright, so let's run back to Genesis 3 real quick. In Genesis chapter 3, verse number, find it. It said in verse 8, chapter 3, verse 8, And he heard the voice of God walking in the garden, the cool of the day. What do you do with that statement? God's a spirit. Here comes his voice and his voice is walking. You know, and I hate to say it, but you know how well the devil is. You know what the closest thing you get to that? You get the teachers and the adults in the Peanuts cartoons. And wah, 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 wah. And then you got talking animals. Ezekiel. It's amazing. What did Ezekiel see? I don't know. What does God sound like? So, saw in the plain Ezekiel chapter 1. Then said he unto me, son of man, particular expression for Ezekiel used once or twice for Daniel 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift up thy eyes now in the way toward the north. All right, he's at the north gate. Look towards the north. So I lift up my eyes the way toward the north. And behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. That's the one Ahaz puts there. It's what we just read. In the temple occupation, in the area of the temple, the gate. And at the gate, at the north side, is this image of idolatry. God says jealous because it makes God jealous that somebody else is getting his worship. And we talked about that last time. But it gets better. I would think that some Baptist preachers would probably want to overread this like they do Jeremiah chapter 10. And he said, Furthermore unto me, son of man, see thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here in the temple. Jeremiah spoke about that. Now I should go far off of my sanctuary. God's going to leave because he's going to have the sanctuary destroyed. He's going to allow the Gentiles in the holy places. Turn thee again, and thou shalt see a greater abomination. All right, he's looking north. Turn. Doesn't say how much to turn. And he brought me to the door of the court. And he's in the courthouse, courtyard. And outside the temple, there were little buildings, courtrooms. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. And you heard the hole in the wall, gang. <laughs> Here it is. Comes out of a Bible. So, where are we back on? So, he turned again, there was see great about and be, and he brought to me the door of the court, and behold, there was a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig, and this is interesting, dig now in the wall. So, he brought me to the door of the court. When I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Son of man, dig now in the wall. When I had dig in the wall, behold, a door. So the wall next to the door, that hole relie relieves another door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations they do here. So here's a room. God says, Go in there and watch the abominations. Did you get that? I want you to get these two words before we go any further. Wicked abominations. And even I have been guilty. So I went in and saw. And behold, every form of creepy thing. Insects, bugs, caterpillars, roaches, ants. Like the recent movies they've been putting out. Movies about ants and bugs and creepy things. We must be coming to the end time. Abominable beast. You mean like the abominable snowman? Bigfoot? Godzilla? All these weird creatures that, you know, the superhero thing. All the idols 
like American Idol actors, actresses, of the house of Israel. So here are all the gods. Here's all the abominable beasts and creepy things on the walls in this room. Portrayed upon the wall round about. I'll give you two examples this could be. And I don't think I'm far off. Now, it's not going to be today modern. But, you know, we can't think these people are stupid. I mean, during this time and all that, they built the pyramids without without cranes, without caterpillar machines, without bulldozers and jackhammers. These people weren't stupid. Portrayed on the wall around about, what about a movie house, movie theater? And up on the walls are these pictures and abominations and idols. And Jason and the Argonauts portrayed of all the gods of, of the Romans and Greeks. How about the gods of the, of the Easter Bunny and all that? And the gods of S Satan Claus. How about the gods of the, of the Baptist Church? We got Christian movies. All right, Christian movie. We got a nice plot for a Christian movie. We even got police officers and, and, and we got secretary. We got nice people in that movie portrayed. All right. That police officer that's in that movie, is he a police officer? No. That used car salesman, I, I got movies in mind. Is he a used car salesman? No. That investigator, no, not an investigator. Is the main character who's married to the, the main character, are they really married in, in real life? No. And their kids that run around the house, are they their kids? No. The main character, and I'm going to say Fred. Is that his name, Fred? No. Married to Betty. Is that her name, Betty? No. And they're in town such and such. Is that an actual town where they live? No. And then you got something that's surrounded by nothing but lies. We got a Christian movie built by liars who don't live where they are, liars who are not married to who they're married, liars who are not in the occupation they say they are, liars who are their names are not their names. If you took that to a courtroom before a judge, it would be found in perjury. But it's a Christian movie. Never real to life. Well, it's based on a real story. I don't care. It's all lies. Oh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a great movie about you know Florence Nightingale. We're gonna do a movie about her biography and everything. The woman playing Florence Nightingale is she Florence Night? No, that's a lie. The woman that's playing is she a nurse? No, she's a liar. Did she build up and become the nurse that we know today? No, then it's a lie. Was it filmed in, I think, England? No, America, Canada? It's a lie. And then these actors and actresses uh, of all, they get up there and they got their great reward and they get their foot and their hands in the cement there in, in Los Angeles and everybody just buys their magazines, they buy their, their posters and they're just love and I got to get their autograph and that's an idol. How many 
many Christian homes, including the adults, that there is a poster or a picture of one of them idolaters, actors, actresses, sports, or whatever it happens to be. Portrayed on your wall. Ezekiel chapter 8. Oh, church, we're going to sit down. We're going to have a movie put up the, and, and put it on the screen up against the wall. Well, we can't read Ezekiel 8. We can't read Jeremiah chapter 10. I got another thing it could be. You got idols. You got abominable beasts. You got creepy things. Now, let me, let, let me give you something here. Now, that won't go, that won't go away. Uh, we want verse 12. Go down to verse 12, halfway at the end of verse 12. You see the word imagery before we move on? Imagery. It says the chambers of his imagery. I'm going to give you Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I don't give you the Greek or Hebrew. I want you to listen to the definition. Sensible. And I know Facebook, you can't read it. But on the video, you'll be able to read it. Sensible. Representations, pictures, statues, rich carving, portraits, or portraiture, something like that, and imagery. You mean like an art studio? Where they got paintings on the wall and they may have sculptures and weird art stuff and to show appearance forms of fancy false ideas imaginary baptism hope I'm saying the word right representations in writing or speaking Lively descriptions which impress the image, the, the images of things of the mind, figures of discord. And how many, and I know there's a lot, Christian households, a representation of the witchcraft of Harry Potter. I know pastors, children, and grandchildren who have on their Facebook, oh, we have the Harry Potter books and the movies. You need to step down on your, uh, your pastor. If you can't handle your, your children, you can't raise your children according to Timothy, and your children are involved in Harry Potter, you got to get out. I like number four. Look at number four. It's just, it, I mean, you can see this. You can't see it on Facebook. Form. F-O-R-M. Make. When you're going to form or make something, you're involved in Im imagery. Make up, make believe. I thought that was interesting. I'm sorry on Facebook, you can't see those things. So back to where we were, verse 10. So I went and I saw and behold every form of creepy thing. Well, look at your movies. An abominable beast. Have you seen some of the some of the book, books and movies by Stephen King? Cujo. And all the idols of the house of Israel. All the idols. And we've read about them in Isaiah and read about them in Jeremiah. All oh, the 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 Tamus, the the uh, uh, the the Queen of Heaven. Esther, that's the one I was trying to think of. You know, you may have Esther portrayed on your walls of your church. And it may not be the womanly figure. It may be her boobies. Because when you look at the image that they have in the, in, in the museums of the carved image of 
Esther, when you put eggs up around your church around Easter, you're putting her boobies up there. Because take a picture, look at on Google, say Esther, and you will see the woman in her image, and she's got all these eggs for boobies. And in your church, you portray on the nursery eggs for Easter. Eggs in the Sunday school room. Ezekiel chapter 8. Oh, how the Bible brings us to we must repent and get right with God. Or we just rebel against God and the word of God and hate the preacher. Hate the teacher. I got one church right now. You, I can give you the address and phone number. The guy who hates me for teaching this stuff. And his congregation, some of them hate what I preach and teach, and they got very aggravated. Oh, excuse me, they were offended at the word of truth. Portrayed upon the wall round about. I forget the panoramic. And you thought that the camera company, came, the panoramic camera, you thought that was something new. Uh-uh, Ezekiel 8.10. I don't even want to go look at what the modern Bible says. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. That 70 is an interesting number because Israel, Judah is going to be in Babylon 70 years, and that comes out all the years they didn't give the land its rest, Sabbath rest. Ancient. That's the King James word for elderly, old. In the midst of them stood Jehazanath, and he's the leader of the 70. You should not call out the religion. You shouldn't name the religion. God did. Ezekiel did. There are 70 men there, and, and, and Ezekiel and God gives them the name of the head honcho. You know Paul named him? You know Jesus named him? You know Peter named him? Moses named him? With every man censor in his hand. That's what they carry the incense in. That's what the Catholic Church has. That's what the New Age has. And they worship the creepy things and abominable beasts and angels and everything and rainbows. And Boy, we're touching much on 8, 10, and 8, 11. And there's, you know, hug the trees, save the, save the octopuses, save the whales, save the manatees, don't kill a bug. You mean Buddha? You mean India? They're starving to death. They're on television. Oh, send us money. Eat the hamburger. That may be grandma. Maybe grandma came back as a shrimp and she was eaten by a, by a shark. Or maybe she was taken to a seafood restaurant and eat. Oh, look at her. Every man has censor in his hand and a thick cloud of incense went up. You mean smoking? There was, I remember a time you could bring, you can come into it. When I grew up, you can go into a movie house and you could smoke. You could smoke in the hospital when I grew up. You could go down into the, into the lobby, to the cafeteria, to, to the, the gift shop. You could buy cigarettes. I remember wherever you, where you went, including a hospital, including that there was ashtrays for you to use. Then said he unto me, God, son of man, has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? You mean to turn off the lights at the, at the movie house? The lights are turning down. The movie's going to start. Shh. Turn off your cell phones. That, 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 and, that, that, roar, and the lion comes out and roars. Beginning, I ain't the lion of the tribe of Judah. Because that lion ain't named Jesus, it's named Leo. 
He's a consolation. Israel worshipped the host of heaven. Wake up and study your Bible. Every man in the chamber of his imagery. And I just gave you the definition. Your art studio or your movie house. For they say, the Lord seeth not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. God has, you know, Jer the, at the preaching of Jeremiah, the people, all right, God's going to kill us, God, God's going to wipe us out. So let's eat and drink and be merry and, watch and do whatever we want to do. Let's do what we want to do. So, I'm going to do it. I'll come over here. Yeah, I'm going to look up. And I be Ezekiel 8 versus who do I want to do? 9 and 10. That's what I'm going to do. I got to move my face out of the way. I'm going to try to move my face out of the way. There's my face go. I got to find which one it is. Gateway. So let's see what we have here. Okay, that's the one. So NIV. This is the NIV. The Nutty Idiot's Version. While they were killing, I was left alone. I fell face down and cried out, Alas, Satan. Am I reading the right one? Savior Lord, are you do going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel and his outpouring of... Am I reading the right? Oh, how come you gave me... You gave me nine. I said eight. I said that did not sound... All right, eight. He said unto me, Son of man, now dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and saw a doorway there. And he said, go in and see the wicked and detestable things that are doing here. So I went and looked and saw portrayed all over the walls all kinds of crawling things and unclean animals and all the idols of Israel. Sound like they were walking around on the walls. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's get the new King James. The worst Bible of all because it's really an imitation. He said to me, Son of man, dig into the wall. And when I dug into the wall, there was a door. He said to me, Go in and see the wicked abomination which they are doing there. So I went in and saw there every sort of creepy thing, abominable beast, and all the idols. But the house of Israel portrayed all round on the wall. Okay. Now, let's see if I can find it. The good news. <laughs> Bible laugh. He said to me, mortal man, break through the wall here. I broke through the, and found a door. He didn't say break the wall. He said, dig a hole. He told me, go in and look at the evil, disgusting things they are doing there. So I went in and looked, and the walls were covered with drawings of snakes and other unclean animals. I'm glad he knew what the Bible could. Creepy things could have been roaches and, and of all the other things which the Israelites were worshipping. That's messed up. Okay, let's see if we can have a... Common English Bible. He said unto me, human one. How about what they say about Jesus? Because Jesus is called the Son of Man too. Dig through the wall. So I dug through the wall and I discovered a doorway. Big difference between a doorway and a door. You can have a doorway with no door. 
And he said to me, go in and see what wicked and detestable things they are doing in there. So I went in and looked and saw every form of loathsome beast and creepy thing. Well, the beast made it first before the creepy thing. And all the idols of the house are engraved on the walls around the mountain. It's far away from what God said. So what we have here is a, of today, we have a movie theater that Christians go. I've been guilty. I've gone to some of the movies. And or an art exhibit, which I've gone. Quite interesting. Because when we go back to Exodus chapter 20, we'll see what God told Israel. 20 verse 3. Exodus 20 verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Aaron did. After God told him not to make a graven image. Any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. You don't draw pictures of angels. Or eagles. How many Christians are guilty of the American bald eagle? You're guilty. Does the Bible say it or doesn't the Bible say it? Or that is in the earth beneath. You mean like worms and creepy little things? Ants. Or that is in the water under the earth. Sharks. Whales. You know, for, for, we're in the realm because I draw too. Well, you know, items to worship. That's what it is. You know, Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image. Verse 4. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. So when you go to the movie, and you like that movie, then you go to the toy store, and you buy all the toys, and you get the trading card, and you get the bubble gum, and you get the hat, and you got the bookcase, and you got the... That's worshiping. And then us Baptists, we go after the Catholics for all their idols. And if we were to go into your Baptist house, into your Baptist children's room, and go to your Baptist children's bookshelf in their room, how many books would be there of imagery and idolatry of movies or talking vegetables that bring us the story of the Bible? What nonsense is that? The Baptist church and the Christians today are so, they think vegetables talk to them. You are a vegetable. And you ask those same very people, I'll close in a moment. Do you read your Bible? No, I don't like it. I read my song. I don't like the Old Testament. But I'll have Mr. Onion tell me about a perverted story of David. Because you can't tell the truth. You might offend the Philistines. Or the children of the people of, of you know, Gaza.
You can't tell the Bible truth today because it may offend the black people. It may offend the, 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 the Ishmaelites, the Ar Arabians. It may offend people who are not Christian. It may offend atheists. You can't preach that gospel because people don't like that gospel. Get it out of here. We don't want to hear it. And Jesus said, Marvel not, the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. We've got a story here in Ezekiel. I mean, do we, are we not guilty of movies and art? We are. And we got a thing in the Baptist Church, you know, we got a Christian movie. It ain't Christian when it lies. And then the Christians get upset when I speak this true. <sighs> He's so mean. So true. 